what's going on YouTube this is K Reese here today I want to bring y'all a video on how to service the engine oil the engine oil filter and your hydraulic oil and filter on your Xmark Laser Z zero turn lawnmower as y'all can see this is the Laser Z this is the S series this is a 2014 model it's got the Kohler CV 742 which I'm gonna go over a lot of a lot of different tips um, from a good friend of mine that I went to high school with that works at a lawnmower shop um, he, he gave me a lot of good information that I want to pass on to y'all um, for example the CV 742 on the 2014 he said these came with CV 740s so this is a newer engine this is the 25 horsepower Kohler Command Pro um, as y'all can see here this mower currently has 1905.3 hours on it y'all can see right there so that's on the actual mower um not on the motor i don't know how many hours are on this motor um from what i understand i, I bought this um and the guy said it was a landscape company that had it uh <clears throat> he knew the father and son business this this mower's in pretty good shape guys um no no problems with it but i just want to go ahead and service it one good time before i get going with it real good this summer um the, like i said this is the s series laser z 60 inch super nice mower guys if, if y'all can you know afford one i highly suggest to, to get one it makes grass cutting so much fun i mean this seat goes up and down and it's got shocks in it and it's just it's, it's awesome but uh enough about that let's go ahead and get started so as you can see i've got some equipment here these are our engine oil filter and this is a genuine Kohler oil filter here are some X mark these two are our hydraulic oil filters and in here you can see I've got $139 later all of this stuff so very expensive to, to do this service um, but it's worth it because you know this is a $12,000 lawnmower you don't want to cheap on servicing it I have premium hydro oil X mark. It's what it calls for. This is what they recommended to me. So you can see I have four quarts of that, which it holds uh, two in each side. And I'll show you all these reservoirs here. This is where your hydraulic oil, this is where you'll locate that. So you take this top off. It's got a dipstick in here. I'll show you all that. But two on each side. And actually what the fella told me was fill take one of these fill one of them up yeah you know, after you change your filter of course which i'll show that but fill one of them up and then take the second one he said take it to the 200 mark right here and that uh will not overfill it he said it should be absolutely perfect if you do that and you can always check and add some after but he said overfilling it is a problem because it just makes a mess um and you can't overfill them so he said do that with that um he gave me some this is some 30 weight kawasaki now this is what it, it calls for use in engines jso oils recommended meets or exceeds manufacturer's warranty requirements so this kawasaki oil here that they recommend contains zinc uh, he told me that if it's good enough to meet Kawasaki's specs, it's good enough for anything. Uh, Kawasaki's very stringent with their specifications as far as their oils go. Uh, so this will be absolutely perfect for this mower. And we are going to go ahead and get started with this process, guys. Alright guys, first thing we're going to tackle is the engine oil and filter. So first thing you want to do is come around to the back of your mower here. And as you can see, if you look down, you got your oil filter. And you've got this metal hose with this, this well rubber hose with a metal cap on the end. And I'm going to show you all that right now. So X Mark could not have made this thing any easier to do. Take your drain pan. You're going to put it under here. You can see there's even a cutout right here in this metal where when you pull this off, that it's going to the oil, some of the oil is going to run down into there. So just they could not have made this easier on us, guys. You're going to take this hose here. As you can see here, I'm just going to pull this out. So when I pull this out, this is what we use to drain our engine oil. So it doesn't even make a mess. 
So you, what you do is you're gonna remove this cap here and I'm gonna show y'all how to do that. All right guys, so what you're gonna do with this hose here, 11 sixteenths, put on this end right here as you can see. And like with your 17 millimeter, you take, turn it that way, counterclockwise. And it was a bitch to get broke free. It was on there pretty good. But as y'all can see, there's a spot here where you put the 11 sixteenths and then this on the end turns as y'all can see right there. So what you're gonna do next, I'm gonna go ahead and show y'all. You're just gonna unscrew this, your bolt here, and we're gonna have some oil running out just like that. All right, so this is almost finished draining, but I wanted to tell you guys, uh, always if you're changing the oil on anything, make sure the engine's warm first. It helps to collect when the engine circulates to collect all the you know trash and stuff that's in the motor um brings it down to the bottom and um you get it's easy to it's easy to drain when it's warmer all right guys so we're down to just a kind of a a little slow drip we can go ahead and reinstall this reinstall our plug here go ahead and snug it back up So it's snug, good to go. We're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna hang this just out of the way for a second, like this, and we're gonna go ahead and pull this filter off. All right guys, so you definitely need an oil filter wrench on this. This one was on there super, super tight. Um, there's different kinds of wrenches out here. I just threw some of these out here so y'all can see um, you know, all kinds of different, different kinds. Uh, I use this one right here. You know, you take your wrench, put it on, kind of twist it so it gets right to the right amount of tension you need and size for the filter and then just go ahead and just turn it up. But uh, counterclockwise on this also, you're gonna, and I got it broke pretty good, so um, we'll go ahead and take it off the rest of the way by hand and let this drain. Like I said, I wanted to show you all right here, we're at the back of the mower, here's our filter. And as you can see, like I was pointing out, there's this cutout right down here that will allow this oil once we kind of loosen it enough to about right here you can see it's starting to drain in a steady stream and then you're gonna need your drain pan so I have it under here and this is kind of what you're looking at guys you can see here I've got it loosened and it's it is starting and it's draining right now without making a mess so we're gonna let it drain like this we'll go ahead and take it off so here's our old oil filter. This is our Kohler Pro Performance oil filter. And you can see, and it even tells you, fill the filter with clean oil, apply oil to the gasket, tighten two thirds of a turn after gasket contacts base, which they tighten way more than that. Um, you can see you got your rubber gasket. You always want to make sure that's intact and not actually stuck to the engine itself. As y'all can see here, our new filter looks just like our old one. So we're gonna do what the instructions say on this. And I usually do this all the time anyway, regardless. And I always put fill this up with some oil to make sure that, you know, when it starts, it doesn't start completely on a dry start. So I always put some oil in these filters, even if it is a horizontal placement like this one is. Um, you know, you don't want to fill it up so that it's running out, but just fill it up a good bit, saturate this filter inside. We'll put a light coat of oil around this gasket here and we'll tighten this bad boy up. All right guys, and y'all can see, I did fill this up. There's still some oil that's in this inside this filter here, so it's not completely dry. Uh, it's not full to where it's gonna come out, hopefully. But um, I just take like I'm doing here with your finger, just make sure you have some oil on this actual gasket here. And now we can go ahead and reinstall this filter. All right, and so this engine does hold right at two quarts of oil. I'll show you all the dipstick here. You can see you've got your add mark and your full mark. Usually when it's here, it's about a quart low. So we're gonna go ahead and fill this thing up. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of Lucas Performance Oil to this just to top it off. All right, so here goes our first quart of the Kawasaki oil. So with your funnel here, you're just gonna go ahead and pour your new oil in. All right guys, so our first quart of oil is in and done. Now I am not paid by Lucas or anything like that. But this oil stabilizer, um, this is some awesome, awesome stuff, guys. It's very, very thick. I mean, it's like honey coming out of here. It is, I'll let y'all just kind of look into this.
but it does some awesome stuff extends the engine life i mean it is some a great great product and i try anytime i change the oil in any of my equipment i try to put a little bit of lucas in there just to top it off so i'm going to add some of this here and you can see the directions say it uses 20 percent of system capacity um so one quart of the stabilizer with four quarts of oil so if you break that out and do the math um say a quart to four quarts we're putting two quarts in so that would be like half a quart of this lucas um i may not put that much but i always like to have a little bit inside these motors just to kind of help with um lubrication and to give you all an idea you all saw the 30 weight oil going in this is kind of what the what the lucas looks like coming out some really good stuff guys i'm just gonna put a little bit of this in here all right guys so topped it off reinsert our dipstick y'all can see we're right here on the full mark so everything looks good and you can see there's still this oil there's still a little dirty probably wouldn't hurt for me to change this thing again uh maybe before this this season's over because it did need changing pretty good all right so that completes the engine oil change process now we're going to get started on the hydraulic oil and filters all right guys so what i've done here just throwing some bricks in these front of these front front casters here just to kind of hold it in place some you can see some of them moved as the mower came back but i've got it on this jack i've got it resting on these blocks with a little bit of support still on this jack so it's safe to get under I'm gonna go ahead and climb up under this bad boy and uh, we'll get these, pull these filters out. So our hydraulic oil filter, here's your part number here. I wanted to show you all this just because I think it will help some people out. If you look at your filter, it goes in this way. So it's gonna go in that way. If you look here on the back side, this is a 5 8 head. This is what we're going to look for up underneath the mower. And I'm going to show you all this. And I also wanted to let you all know another tip. Like I said, I was going to tell you all tips. Do you see that white X right there? That white X. This is on all replacement filters. Now, the guy, my buddy at the shop, told me to make sure when I look at this, if I see on my factory my factory mower that I have right you know right here I haven't I haven't changed it um, if the fluid if these have ever been serviced they'll be white that's a replacement filter if this is black y'all and we don't see any of that then that means that for the life of this mower these filters and the, have never been replaced the oil may have been replaced but it wouldn't make any sense to replace the oil without the filters and X mark doesn't really recommend even replacing the oil uh, totally except for what you lose from the filter change because of the air that may get in the lines but I just wanted to stress this to y'all show this to y'all we're gonna go investigate right now all right guys so we're under the mower here I wanted to show y'all this is our filter here for this side and you can see the other one is right here looks just as just like what I was telling y'all and from what it looks like it it does have i did see a white x so like i said guys that leads me to believe y'all can see here it's hard to see over there but that white x these have been replaced in the past so that makes me feel better this one right here i mean it's just really dirty under here but i'm gonna go ahead um i got my light you're gonna have your drain pan now my buddy told me uh, a good trick to do for this so you don't make a mess when you loosen this filter up he said let it drop down and just kind of rest on this bar right here and let that oil all drain out because if you just pull it out all together it's going to go everywhere so that's another trick another tip from me to y'all all right guys and so what you're going to need to take this off like i said this is a 5 8 head um i have a deep wall 5 8 socket you don't have to use that uh, it's just what i'm using it gave me a little more extension um i got a little u-joint right here just kind of swivels around uh to, i didn't know how tight it was going to be up under here and what i would have to do um you're going to need a ratchet but we're going to go ahead now turn this thing counterclockwise and go ahead and start draining this all right guys so it wasn't really it wasn't really too hard um you can see i went ahead 
loosen it and now I can kind of just turn it with one hand and this is kind of what you got going on here um, I'm gonna go ahead and get my pan in position to start catching some of this oil I do want to tell y'all um, you'll know your oil is good hydraulic oil is a green color so if this is nice pretty green uh, the oils in pretty good shape if it's brown or dark needs to be replaced another thing I want to tell y'all the first 250 hours of this mower is the most important time uh, to change the oil for the hydraulic oil for the actual life of the the hydraulic system itself that first 250 hours is most important uh, my buddy at the shop told me you know after that really some people just run them and run them and never never change the filter or the oil but I'm doing it because this is mine I want to make sure that everything is absolutely perfect leveled off topped off correctly uh, that way if any leaks or anything develop in the future I know that it was right before and I know what to look for all right guys so I'm holding I'm holding y'all here trying to show you all this and do this at the same time um, I can feel it's starting to get pretty loose so I'm gonna go ahead I've got my pan as positioned as best I can up under here where I am um, start loosening this some I just don't want to make a freaking mess everywhere so Oh, there it goes. Shit. <laughs> I told y'all, it's kind of a pain in the ass. Um, y'all can see here, looks like it's pretty green. Hydraulic oil looks pretty good. Like I said, rested on that bar. Um, just like my buddy told me to do. This, this oil actually looks pretty good, guys, but it is a good idea to go ahead and change it. I got this shit running all over me. <laughs> Alright, guys, so I wanted to show y'all this two new filters installed installation is the same as the removal just put it in tighten it up snug it up and that's it so everything looks good we wiped all the excess oil as much as we could off now we're gonna go ahead and lower it down some so that it's level and add our hydraulic fluid all right guys so your hydro oil is located if you come over here you can see which side of the mower on you have that orange fill cap here for the right and the orange fill cap there for the left now before you do this you need to make sure that you clean very good and you can see I've taken a rag and I also have my air compressor with some compressed air just blew all the dust and dirt away from around here because when you open this cap like I said you know I mean lawnmower is a dirty thing so you want to make sure that all the dirt is clear of this area before you open this cap when you open this cap and uh, start moving around you don't want to knock any dirt or have any dirt fall in here in your funnel or anything like that so uh, what we're gonna do I'm gonna show you all this all right so you take your fill cap and you can see here's your dipstick you see you have a high mark down there where it should be you see this one's barely on the stick because we have just drained it you can see all the dirt here like I'm saying guys around this area make sure you don't get any of that into here and some of it with this cover here it's hard to get everything with the cap in place but I'm gonna clean this up as best as I can and uh, make sure we get this good and clean alright guys so I have this funnel here with a long neck on it you can see got it in place we're gonna go ahead and start filling it up with the oil all right guys so here we go we're gonna start filling it up here with this hydro oil like I said you know and, and like my buddy told me make sure that when you do this you don't overfill it all right guys so I wanted to bring you inside to show you this um, I felt like I could explain it better on this whiteboard um, when you're filling up the oil on your your for your hydraulic oil is you have to be very very careful like I said you have the mark 200 cc's it right at the bottom is where you want to to stop filling it at but now I'll tell you I overfilled both of them knowing to stop there because it is just that close and I want to really show you all this and demonstrate I felt like I could do it better here so here is your this is your cap for your hydraulic fluid this is the dipstick that's in there and I wanted to show you all this um, there's an H right here with a line 
and then there's a line above it. Now, this line that's above it, it extends around the whole tube. The tube is flat. Um, it's probably, you know, like, like this thick, but the line goes all the way around. It just encircles this whole tube all the way around the backside. That's not the fill mark. The fill mark is actually the only line that's on the front of the stick. It is not on the back side of the stick. It doesn't extend around the dipstick. It's right here. And you want that you want it to be right on that line. Um, now this is important for two reasons. Um, that well the first one is to protect the seals. So the seals in the hydraulic system and this reservoir is like very shallow. So the seals in the hydraulic system, you really want to protect those. If you overfill it, you can blow the seals out. Um, too little fluid then you know you run a risk of burning up the hydraulic system itself so it's really better to overfill it if you did it's better to have too much than too little too little you're gonna blow a seal out or too much I'm sorry you're gonna blow seals out too little you're gonna burn the whole pump up so it's cheaper to replace the seals in the pump but I hope this kind of visual you know just kind of help helped y'all kind of understand like that dipstick is, it was confusing to read at first um, Make sure you get it to that line. Uh, just be very careful when you hit that 200 mark on your second quart of the hydraulic oil. Um, just be very careful. I mean, I would do it just just drop by drop because it is very easy to overfill it. Extremely easy. And I'm uh, sorry if my hand looks freaky to y'all. I got stung by a wasp. I know that's kind of crazy. But anyway, um, <clears throat> cutting grass too. <clears throat> I hope this helped y'all. I hope this video helped y'all. And I hope this little diagram helped y'all. But I'm Kay Reese. Thank you all for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.